The name on this is a little bit harder to pinpoint. The websites and all the marketing says Linglong, but then on the box itself it says Linlong. So I'm not quite too sure what is the correct name, if it could just be a translation error. But yeah, this is the new $15 bullet IM from KZ. This is another one that seems to have a few people excited due to the frequency response. So let's look at it. Now I'll just say I wasn't really expecting to be that surprised by this, but really I was really surprised by this IM. I was not expecting that at $15 and especially from a company like KZ, that an IM like this would have such a good case. I was just really surprised by the case that this came with. It's a nice little hard waterproof case and it actually seems kind of decent. I might even use this for a good IM one of these days. But what about the IEM itself? Well, it's got a few issues. But before we talk about those, let's just go straight to the frequency response because that seems to be what most pe people notice about this. So let's go look at that. So when it comes to frequency response, we can clearly see that it is kind of bassy and warm, which isn't a bad thing. Some people like that. But I think what was notable about this was at $15, it does have quite a good upper mid range with a Harman like rise and then and then this area up here being a little bit tamer which is actually something I prefer myself when it comes to IMs and their tuning. It helps to tone down some harshness that certain IMs seem to portray with when it comes to when it comes to certain instruments. So it's nice to see this sort of a shape in the upper mids. Now when it comes to the low end here it does have quite a bass boost and that is a prominent thing about this IM. Now a thing about tonal balance is it's not just divided into sections. So when this entire low range here is boosted like this, it does also as well kind of tilt the rest of the response down a bit. So even though overall it looks like it might compare with something like the Tangzu Wanner, having, having a similar sort of mid-range, they end up sounding quite different. It doesn't sound like a Tangzu Wanner with just more bass. It sounds kind of blunted and a little bit dark and not very well defined. When listening to the Wanner, Vocals and a lot of treble details come across a lot clearer, and instruments sound more defined and clear. Whereas with the Ling Long, it sounds like the lower mid range sort of overemphasizes the rest of the response. One way to look at this is to maybe shift down the Ling Long response a little bit. Because it has such a bass boost, the overall balance kind of shifts down slightly. Maybe not quite to this degree, this might be a bit of an exaggeration, but it can be a kind of a visual of how. Having one area boost a lot sort of changes the balance and how the rest of the response sounds as well. It is all, it's all sort of linked together. So looking at it kind of like this, for example, you can kind of visualize how it does end up having a little bit more of a down tilt response. So why did I want to get that out of the way first? Well, the short story is sound wise, it's all right. It's nothing special. It just sounds kind of like a cheap, okay IM. The real problems for me come with this design. Now the fit and ergonomics are fine, it's a little bullet IEM and it's actually built quite decently. It's metal and it feels nice. But the problem is their whole open back design, um, which I'm going to put in quotes there because it's not really anything special. It's a huge part of their marketing and they even show it on the website how traditional IEMs will have ports or vents for the front volume and the rear volume to sort of normalize the air pressure. But their IEM has a sealed front volume and then it's open back so it gives a more some special qualities that they really want to show you in marketing. But the thing is, first of all, that's not really that special. A lot of IEMs will have quite a bit of space inside the shell behind the driver so that there is a good amount of air. As well, there's usually a rear vent so that the air can move in and out of, of the shell behind the driver. As well, some other bullet IEMs like say the Tanch Gem Tanya also has a similar design where behind the driver it's pretty much just the same design as the Ling Long where it's where it's like an open area with a sort of mesh so a similar sort of open back design as they say but it doesn't really do anything special you still get the same sort of noise isolation um, and the area where the driver is seals between the front and rear volumes so it's nothing really that special it's more just marketing but the problem is the front volume has no sort of venting Many IEMs will have some sort of like a port or vent on, on the front volume in front of the driver. So when you're pushing the IEM into your ear and it's sealing, a little bit of air is able to move between that port and it's able to normalize the air pressure in your ear canal. One of the few IEMs that doesn't seem to have a front volume vent is like the Moondrop Quarks, but that has a similar issue as what I'm going to talk about here. With the KZ Ling Long, when you put it in your ear, it builds up extra pressure. I can feel as you put it in your ear, you can also hear sort of a driver crinkle as the driver is being compressed from the extra buildup of air. Now, sometimes you can put an IEM like that in 
and it will still sort of normalize because it's never a perfect seal. There's going to be a little bit of air coming in and out. But the problem is with this, it doesn't really seem to normalize very quickly at all. So it ends up, first of all, being uncomfortable because it feels like there's either too much pressure or too low pressure in your ear, depending on how, depending on how you're putting it in or taking it out. As well, it seems to affect how the driver performs. Quite often when listening with this, I'll have one ear at one pressure and another ear at a different pressure, and the driver tends to sound muted on one side. It becomes like a really bad channel imbalance. This isn't just the case of the driver itself, because both through measurements and through different seatings, you are able to get it where they're both at sort of a normalized pressure. But what it takes to get it to seal consistently on both sides seems quite finicky, at least with my ears. On one side, I found myself trying to twist it and like break the seal a little bit to to get the IEM to normalize the pressure so that it wouldn't sound like there's a bad channel imbalance. This again is something that could be really easily fixed with just a venting port for the front volume. But then you sacrifice the bass extension. With something else like say the Tangzu Warner, it has a very similar looking frequency response to the to the KZ Ling Long, although the bass doesn't extend as high in the low frequencies. But with the Tangzu Warner, if you cover up the port for the front volume, then the bass extension becomes almost identical to the KZ Ling Long. So it was definitely a design choice that they did. In order to have that much of a sub bass boost, they decided to not have a vent in the front volume, which for me seems to kind of ruin the entire experience because it is really finicky and hard to get it to seal consistently and not have a noticeable response difference. I did some tests on my own to see how bad this was with my coupler, and now this might not be perfectly scientific or accurate, but, but you can see how there is quite a bit of variation between just like set it, between setting the earphone in and then like pushing it in slightly and then pulling it out slightly. The, the entire response between the bass, mids, and treble shifts quite a bit. Comparatively, when doing this exact same thing with the Tangzu Wanner, there is almost no difference whatsoever. So this definitely, to me at least, seems like something to do with the front volume and it's just not having anywhere to go. It doesn't normalize quick enough. But yeah, other than that, it's a nice little IEM. It's built well. It has a pretty decent case, so I, I think I, I think I like the case more than anything else. But yeah, um, sound-wise, it's okay. Nothing really special in this today's market, in my opinion. I, I prefer the Tangzu Wanner over it, but that's, again, $5 more, so it depends if you want to spend that much more. But yeah, it's just a cheap $15 IEM, which has a couple flaws, which for me, it just kind of breaks this IEM for me.